again this time it's live and uh, with a program of painting landscapes of our immediate area namely Long Island uh, this evening it's Jones Pond in case anybody doesn't know where that is it's in the Peconic River State Park and it's a little bit a bit east of the Brookhaven lab and um, it's uh, actually a beautiful place and here is the spot uh, gone out and gotten a shot by uh, Mike Fagan who um, is going to be going on to other, other climbs, but he's a remarkable cameraman, and he goes out and he finds these beautiful shots while I'm in Virginia, and he, and he does a great deal of wonderful imaginary, imaginative, rather, um, camera work, and um, that's why he's probably going on to bigger and better things, and so I wish him good Godspeed and good luck and fare thee well. Anyway, Jones Pond, look at it. Is that quite uh, one of the most enchanting places you can imagine? just outside, a little bit northwest of Manorville, Long Island, off exit 69 of the Long Island Expressway. And this is the quarry for the evening. Um, I'm going to start in, as I always do, from scratch. Here is a blank canvas, and here is <clears throat> the way I like to treat composition. I like to talk about it as I'm going, because most people would love to know about composition. Now, on this particular one, uh, the horizon line is uh, almost exactly in the center of the, um, of the uh, rectangle, which is going to be the size of the painting. Um, I'm going to, I always start with the horizon line because that is the most easily identified uh, reference point when you're composing a landscape. And then the next one is the land masses just uh, to the, t at the top of that particular uh, horizon line. Here, because we live on Long Island, there is no visible sign of any mountains at all. This is a uh, wooded area, really very, very wooded. And here is the two-line composition. So with a, with a slight stretch of the imagination, you can pay a picture that this is sky, this is land, and this is something. It could be water. Actually, that's what it is. And so with the, um, uh, with the advent of a, another shoreline over here and a meadow in the distance um, between the trees, I'm going to indicate this meadow, a narrow sliver of yellow, which, of course, is going to show through the trunks of the trees, but to, to be paid attention to because this is the kind of thing that gives depth to a, to a landscape as opposed to being something totally flat. If you need to call me or you would like to find out what I'm doing and why I'm talking so much, do call. It's 348-6800. This is the moment to get me. Otherwise, um, I'm recorded most of the time. But tonight, it's live. Last Tuesday of every month is the time that the cable evil easel comes alive. Here is the diagonal, which I'm always anxious to find in a composition. It leads the eye into the picture. And the diagonal is the, shore, is the uh, shoreline in the front of this little pond. And there it goes clear over to the corner. And you can immediately see that there is a, an optical illusion that this otherwise flat surface has now turned into something that goes off into the distance. Everything else is purely incidental. This is the important part of the composition. It is always nice, however, to have the verticals. And the verticals in this case are trees growing by the banks. And uh, one is good, uh, two is OK, but Mozart uh, taught us that three is best. So here is two, and the third one is a part of the, of the single one. So uh, uh, with the Mozartian theory of three, you have 
the perfect number. You've got sky, the land in the distance, the river or pond, and then the foreground. A simple composition, certainly not anything that is going to boggle the mind, and all we have to do now is to find some way of interpreting this in an interesting way. As usual, I uh, uh, talk about the outrageous and outlandish uh, habit of mixing paint on the canvas. Um, for many reasons that I've spoken of before, it is, uh, it is a simpler way of handling the business of being in the field. With a slight touch, and you'll see this very small amount of cerulean blue is what this is called in this great glob of blue here long island enjoys clear skies uh cloudless and clear and wonderful skies and this one happens to be that however that cerulean blue is a little bit too uh well i would call it electric in color blue so i'm going to give it some more white and i'm also going to give it a touch of purple to let lessen the electric quality of that blue. And you can see that the purple, uh, that the, the monitor is doing very, very well. You'll be, you're, you're being able to see absolutely clearly the mixture of colors. I uh, always advise and please always mix the colors thoroughly because there's nothing in my opinion more amateurish or annoying than, the, uh, than colors that are not pro properly mixed, especially if you are looking for a totally uh, cloudless, flat background of sky. And there, we've practically gotten rid of all the color. That's, this has stained the canvas. So here is the, here is the sum, uh, sum total of the paint, which I am thinking will cover this canvas. Don't forget, call if you, uh, if you're, um, if you have a mind to. If you haven't, just watch, and we can, um, we can uh, proceed at a fairly good pace uh, with this. Oh, good. There, see, I mentioned it once, and there they are. Uh, hello there. Tell me who you are, please. Hello. Hello. Yes. My name is Gene. Hi, Gene. I love your painting. I watch you every time you're on. Oh, wonderful. I paint myself, but I've learned a lot of little things from you. Great. Tell me, I'm watching you now. Uh, do you uh, uh, oil your canvas, or do you, uh, do you add any uh, uh, material to the paint before you spread it as you are? Uh, I'm not adding any material. This is the paint as it comes out of the tube. I also do not size nor prepare these canvases. They're purely for demonstrations. I see. Uh, this is a raw canvas board. No primer, no, well, I mean, it's primed already when you buy it. Yes. But for the most part, I work on this, uh, on this raw canvas, and uh, the colors that I'm using are strictly out of the tube. If I need to thin, thin them for very fine work, I do it with turpentine or with my marge medium. Okay. What uh, else, Gene? I, I work with copal, uh, with the copal uh, medium, uh, yep. light medium. Yes. Which that, I find very helpful. It's uh, tricky, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Some copal, like the copal dryer is great, but it's tricky. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm where, sure. uh, by the way, when, where could I meet you someday? Well, uh, I, am, I live in Front Royal, Virginia, yeah. and I have a gallery down there, and if you all want to scoot down Route 81 and get to the middle of town in Front Royal, I'm right there. Well, how about out here in Long Island? Well, uh, only occasionally. Uh, if we arrange some sort of a, of a group meeting here at the cable TV station, that would be possible. Well, that's very nice. And if we do it, I'll announce it in plenty of time, and I would very much like to meet you, Gene. I'd like to show you some of my stuff. Yes, I want to see it without fail. Thank you. For Thanks for calling. Bye. Good. So, here we have uh, the cloudless sky done with a certain amount of, um, of uh, rapidity, and that's important uh, when you are working against time, which is what you're doing when you're out there in the environment. I, you don't, I do not have to smooth this out, but um, uh, mixing the techniques is, is okay, is also allowed, but I want people to see how, if the uh, monitor is picking up the uh, palette knife um, uh, texture, I want them to see that they can either leave the palette knife texture just as it is, or they can smooth it out a little bit. I rather like to see the palette knife texture applied here because it gives a, a nice painterly oil painting quality. Well, I did this um, on another scene uh, that um, I did recently with a landmass in the background. Now, green, and I complained at the other show, I wish that the Grumbacher or the Winds and Newton people would put out, put out a wonderful green, but they haven't. Uh, they put out an a, 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 a absolutely god-awful green. The only one that I'm willing to work with is called sap green, and that's a little bit transparent. And so that's a dangerous color to fool with because of its transparency. It does not have any guts. So uh, I, I usually take blues and ochres and uh, bases of white, and here I am mixing on this, uh, on this little, other little piece of canvas board. 
And to get the distance uh, um, color of that landmass in the distance, and it has to be somewhat subdued because it is a little bit far away. So let me let me let me check and see whether or not this is going to be too dark. No, I think that's okay. And I'm going to I'm going to uh, well, it's t it's still got an awful lot of green in it, and so I'm going to subdue it with the with orange. Uh, green is uh, the has an opposite, which is orange. And if you want to reduce the vibrancy of green, you add the color, which is on the opposite side of the color wheel, which is orange. The greens take orange, and so do blues. But um, this is how, if the green is just too vibrant and too too awfully green, you you um, you uh, control it by by adding uh, orange or sienna or purple. Uh, and here I'm, uh, I'm, um, I'm doing the darker tone of this land thing in the back first because I want to be putting some highlights on uh, for uh, the third dimensional quality, which is what everybody is after, but in a very subtle way. These are deciduous trees all mixed up with evergreens, I believe, back there, which is typical of Long Island. There is a, there's a wonderful variety of greeneries here on this uh, spit of land, which is some hundred and... Uh, 25 miles long, and um, the uh, the variety of trees is what makes this uh, such an identifiable spot. Uh, there are places in the world where there is a huge variety of trees, but here it is consistent throughout the most of the um, most of the island. You have the you have the uh, Long Island uh, evergreen, which is uh, cedar. Oh, good, another call, and I'll continue my our boreal lecture in a minute. Hello there, tell me who you are, please. My name is King. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I have, uh, you know, I don't do much painting, but I'm interested in photography. And my question is, just to help I identify that location, do you think maybe uh, a house on the side or maybe a boat uh, in the water would give it some more uh, life to it? Well, it, we, we, yeah, I d of course it would give it more life, and you're always, um, you're always hoping that uh, the human being will come and, and produce a lovely thing like a boat or a, or a dog or a bird or... A, or uh, picnickers or something. Uh, right. Certainly, the uh, the uh, the presence of human beings in any landscape uh, adds an interest, which is of course valuable. Or even an old house or an old yeah, shack sure. off to the side. Why do you Why do you want to know it for for location? Well, uh, you know, this could be anywhere, any any area. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm just. It, it looks like. Uh, the Nessaquag River, Smithtown area, but I have no idea. Uh, oh, I think, oh, you probably tuned in late because when I first opened, I told you where this was. But anyway, let me repeat it. It's on the Peconic River State Parkway, just a little bit uh, east of Brookhaven Lab, uh, near Manorville. I see. Are you familiar with that area? I've been out there a couple times. Okay, yeah. well, that's where this little pond is. It's called Jones's Pond. I see. And um, and there is uh, there are just wooded it's it, uh, a densely wooded area with no uh, with no human habitation nearby except the Brookhaven Lab. Yeah, I know in photography, uh, what what makes a photo very interesting is uh, oh. you know the foreground background aspect. Of course, oh or absolutely. Else, or, else, or else the framing, like uh, the branches of trees. Yes. In the foreground to frame off the picture in the background. Yes, of course, absolutely. You yeah, you found your that. Eye into it. Sure. Well, um, well, anyway, nice uh, chatting with you. Well, I'm certainly glad you called. I, uh, your name again? Uh, name is King Pedler, P-E-D-L-A-R. Oh, name. and your first name is King? Yeah. Well, that's a modest name, isn't it? And I have relatives down in the uh, northern Virginia area, Fairfax and Falls Oh, Church. well, that's only a stone's throw from where I am. Yeah. If you go visit them, you jolly well better come and see me. Well, do you have workshops and those kind of things? I have a gallery. You do? I have a gallery right in the middle of the town of Front Royal. Uh, how do you spell it? F R O N T Royal. Oh, Front Royal, huh? Yes. Which is where? Near Richmond, or? No, it's just a little bit west of uh, of um, Fairfax, where you're going. Oh, that area. Yes. So if you go down and see your cousins or whatever they are, another you... cousin I have in Vienna. I've got them all over that. Oh well, then you better come out. You better show up in Front Royal one of these days. Right. The name of the gallery. Windrow Galleries. Oh, a Windrow. Yeah, can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, nice talking to you. Well, it was good of you to call, and I hope to see you sometime. And I'm, and I'm still fascinated in, uh, in your work, and particularly composition. Good, good. I'm glad I talk about it and that people listen, because composition is not paid much attention to. Yes. As a camera person, you know that it's important. Extremely. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'm glad you called me, King. Nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye now. Um, 
All right. While he was talking, while we were solving the problems of, uh, of uh, composition and photography and location and so on, I was putting the, the, uh, the light sides of the trees in here. It's very subtle. It must be attended to because um, otherwise it's just wallpaper. And it's done by putting the dark color on first and then applying the lighter colors afterwards. I think that you agree that that sort of works very nicely. The, um, the close-ups uh, take care of, uh, of an awful lot of very detailed stuff, which, I'm, uh, which I uh, may attend to a little bit later, but um, because the um, uh, spring is not yet fully uh, bloomed at the time that this uh, was taken, and so there's still a lot of leafless trees over there on that other bank, uh, but that makes for an interest for interest because they're mysterious and sort of grayish green and uh, on the verge of, of bursting into, um, into bloom. So um, all seasons of the year to me are an interesting, uh, are an interesting phase. Um, and even now, when we are not quite finished with uh, spring and not having begun summer, there's a great deal of stuff that's interesting. Oh, you have another call. Good. Hello there. Tell me your name, please. Hello. My name is Robert. Hello, Robert. Yeah, uh, I, I dabble a little bit in uh, photography, and uh, like the gentleman before, and uh, a little bit in uh, artisan painting, like you do yourself. Uh, I uh, can, can. Could you speak up just a little bit? I can barely hear you. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Okay. Um. Well, I, I'm. Uh, forgive me, but I've come in late. Are you? Uh, what are you working with? What kind of paint? I'm working with oils. Oh, okay. Here they are. On this, uh, on this uh, sort of um, uh, recycled piece of canvas board. And I always work in oils. I don't work in watercolor or acrylics. It, it just confused me because it looked very light on the screen. Ah. Oh, is well. It, is it watered down? Is oh, no. They're, they're quite thick, as a matter of fact. I'm using a palette knife in many instances. Hmm. So, right. um, so uh, I, I wonder why it looks, th I wonder why it looks um, uh, watered down. Poss possibly the, the canvas. Well, uh, I don't know. Well, we'll, we'll keep uh, your name again, sir. Rob. Oh, Rob, you told me that. Um, you see, if we get a real close-up of this, you'll see how thick the paint is going on um, mm. and, and not watered down at all. See how thick that is? Yes. Good. It just must be the color or uh, the texture. I'm not well, sure. yeah, whatever it may be. Well, I, so you're a photographer as well. Yeah, I, I, uh, I like doing nature shots as well as uh, industrial shots. Uh, Good. Decay air. Are you do it for a hobby or do they pay you? Uh, mostly a hobby. Uh -huh. I, I, I write for money. Oh, Novels? Uh, no, no, not novels, not yet. Uh, but uh, I, I've done some freelance work in the, the New York area. Good. An artist among us. Well, thank you very much. Well, I appreciate your calling, Rob. Okay. Call bye -bye. me again sometime. Bye. Bye. Now, here's this lovely sunlit meadow that is way sort of off, hiding behind all those trees. And I'm going to now hide that meadow behind the trees. And for that reason, I'm going to get my, new, my newly acquired wonderful brush which uh, here has got these wonderful flexible um, bristles, and I'm going to use a sort of an amorphous uh, dark tone and let you see how now suddenly these trees are going to be in front of the meadow. Um, they, uh, the, uh, the business of preparing the background to receive the details in the foreground is what I call layered painting. And... Um, the uh, the trunks of the trees are going before in front of this meadow. They are they are growing by the waterside, and also they um, they are uh, they are uh, ob ob obstructing the view of the um, of the uh, meadow in the distance with some of these uh, with the with the trunks and the branches and so on. And to me, that's always rather rather mysterious and intriguing uh, about about landscape painting. How you can give the illusion that something is uh, with just a very simple um, technique, uh, drop that meadow clear off into the distance. Um, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it can be, it, it's, it's done by observation. When you're sitting out there and you're seeing what's happening, you merely interpret it the way you see it. So here is, the, is that great row, nice row of trees with a shiny meadow in the, in the, in the distance. Um, the, uh, the, the going out and getting these shots uh, for this program is an innovation of uh, cable vision here, of the, cha of the uh, cable easel. Uh, we began it a while back, and it's worked out very nicely, uh, and, and people seem to be catching on with the idea that they themselves can do this. They can go out with their own camcorders and uh, find a scene, set it up for a half an hour or 40 minutes, and then take a few close-ups for reference later. 
and um, the the um, the technique seems to be uh, uh, quite successful with a lot of people. They write to me and tell me how it works. Oh, okay, here's another call. Hello there. Tell me who you are, please. Hello. Hello. Hello? Yeah. Hi, uh, yes, this is Rosemary. I'm calling from Babylon. My fiancé and I just um, tuned into your program. Oh, good. And um, I was just wondering, how do you get um, the landscape so detailed? I'm a graphic designer, and okay. I've always been um, interested in landscape painting. Yeah. Um, first of all, I was wondering what kind of media you're using. Is that oil? Yes. Or? It is oil. Oh, yes. And how do you get the trees in the background, like what you're painting on now, so detailed? Well, they're not that detailed. They're not detailed. No, they look as though they might be detailed because I pay attention to the light side of a tree okay. and I prepare the darkness. Have you been watching me for any amount of time at all? Um, no, maybe the last uh, two minutes or so, three oh, minutes. Oh, no, I mean, I is this the first in. time you've ever tuned in? Yes, it is. Ah, oh, well, I've been doing this, I've been doing this ad nauseum for years. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, I've been talking about this for years and years and years. And so if you're tuning in for the first time, no, I can understand your question. Uh, but uh, observation is the, uh, is the important thing. As you can see, I'm giving you interpretations of this. It's not exactly abstract. It's absolutely recognizable. But it's a, it's a technique in which you, uh, which you get the essential details, uh, which gives the illusion of intense detail. Okay. Is that making any sense to you at all? Yes, it does. Oh, good. What do you design? Clothing? Um, no, I work for a vitamin company, Nature's Bounty, on the island, on really? Long Island, and I design their packaging. It's all computer graphics. Oh, you do computer graphics? Yes. You must be a genius. <laughs> okay. That is absolutely beyond me. I would have not the foggiest notion of how to begin. <laughs> and I wouldn't have the foggiest notion of how to begin to paint a landscape. Well, then we're even. <laughs> I'm certainly glad you called. Thank you. And um, It looks like you do great work. Thank you so much. I'm on the air four times a week, so there's really no excuse for you not watching me more often. I will tune in from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. No, lectures in, no lecture intended. Just a <laughs> joke. Good. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Uh, well, here we have the, uh, the darkness of, that, uh, of the line of the shore way off there in the distance, uh, sli slightly interpreted, a couple of wiggles here and there, to, um, and uh, the need to separate this uh, meadow and the shoreline from the river. I'm using this uh, very cooperative and nice uh, brush of mine, which I just bought uh, today. And it's a, uh, let me see what it is. It's a symphony number no. six. Uh, and it's number 284, and it costs $5.55, and it's an absolute doll. It's going to die because I'm going to use it a great deal, and, but uh, so I don't believe in spending 16 and 17 and 18 dollars on a brush uh, when they're going to when their life is so short-lived anyway. Because I do a great deal of painting, and they do uh, those bristles do just get tired, and eventually it simply doesn't work anymore. So here is the uh, here is the uh, beginning uh, of a landscape painting which I think is pretty self-explanatory, the, uh, the need to uh, attend to some details, but then also to economize on, on um, some of the um, repetitious things that happen. Uh, namely, there probably is 18 times more trunks than this, but you don't need any more. What you're doing is to interpret uh, what the scene is. Now we come, of course, to the, uh, the extraordinary color of that pond. Another call? Okay. Hello? Hello. Are you there? I'm here. Good. Glad to watch your show. There are so many on TV, and yours is the best, and I'm an artist. Oh, wonderful. Great. What what medium do you work in? Oil. Uh-huh. I've tried everything, but yes. oil's the best. I think there's more ability to do more detail. Oh, absolutely. Oil. And blending. And my son told me you were on the air, and I finally found your show. I've been watching it, but most of your shows have been um, taped. And this is the first one where you get through to Pat. <laughs> but your well, work is marvelous. Well, thank you so much. You're, you're, I've forgotten your name again. My name is Bobby. Bobby? That's my nickname. Okay. I have, in fact, when I sign my oils, my oil paintings, yes. people see my name, they say it's very unusual. It's R-O-B-E-A, Rebea. Oh. Very odd. But your work is unbelievable compared to all the art shows I watch. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That's fabulous. Um, I, I work from life. At least I get as about the closest I can get is to have this monitor in here. That's the closest I can get to life at this point. That's the same as I feel about it. And if you don't work from life, you're not getting the picture. Well, that's very true. All my artwork is that way. People say that when they see it. 
I'm so glad, R R Robbie. I'm All glad right. you called. And thank you. Call again. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, while we were discussing uh, uh, names and oils, uh, I mixed up some color for the for this lovely little pond. Yeah, this little pond has got two different colors going for it. It's got, oh, not, uh, that is not pale enough. Uh, it gets darker as it gets, goes over towards the, um, towards the uh, right side of the picture. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of, of, of white here, which is the basis of um, most colors uh, in painting, the basis is white. So that's why you buy uh, big uh, tubes big pound tubes of the white because um, uh, you, uh, it's amazing how quickly you use a tube. When I do, when I do some shows here and a couple of, uh, and a few tapings, I can manage to use almost a pound of white. So uh, always be sure that you have uh, the basic color in great abundance for, uh, when you get to work, especially if you're out there here in such a place as Jones's Pond. There isn't a lot art store available anywhere, so you'd better be, you'd better be equipped with the right stuff. So this is getting a little bit darker as it gets towards the left side of the, of the picture. Uh, I never question why these things happen because um, they happen with uh, changes of light, changes of time of day, changes of the wind, the surface of the water changes, and the color therefore changes with it. So what I do is to try to keep up with it as best I can and work as quickly as possible uh, because uh, things do change very rapidly when you're out there in the, uh, in the wild. <laughs> Which, um, which of course this is hardly wild, but it certainly is uh, wilder than your living room. Another call, good. Hello there, tell me who you are, please. Hello, hello. Gone? Yes, all right, are you there? No, something, something has missed on the communications. Maybe they'll come back. Uh, who, whenever, whenever they're ready, just call back again because sometimes technology uh, plays tricks on us. I'm going to be mixing some darker color while sort of waiting for whomever wants to get a hold of me to come back. And um, this is some cerulean blue with a touch of uh, spectrum purple and some more white so that I can get the brilliance and the, and the vibrancy over on the other side of the picture. Hello there, are you there now? Hello. Hello? Yes. Yeah, I'm here, Hi. Ray, by the name of Ray. Hello, Ray. Uh, I've been watching your work for years, in fact, uh, you almost painted my home here a few years back, uh, West Meadow Beach. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was looking at, a lot of times I see you do that one, uh, Smith's Bungalow down at the end. Yes. And, uh, yeah, a lot of those stones uh, I helped put in there back in the 40s. <laughs> that's a wow. long time back. Wow, that's great, Ray. Right. And, uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I live over there. I have a place. And uh, down at the end, uh, what you did, the game clock and um, Elzebo's Cottage, which was which burned down it two years right, ago. Right, right. That was called the Barnacle, remember, Ray? Oh, right, that's right. I've been there since when Mrs. Elzebo had that years back. I probably know you, Ray, from the beach. I did. I've seen you and talked to you a couple of times when you were down at the end drawing. <laughs> Good. Painting. Well, and I'm... I appreciate it. It's very relaxing, and I really enjoy looking at your program. Thank you. And I'd like that. Uh, one other caller said, I see most of your uh, tapes, and it's very, not that often that I can get a hold of you when you're alive. Well, uh, you got me tonight. I got you tonight, and I'm looking and I'm watching. That's great. And you're a wonderful painter. Thank you so much, Ray. I'll okay. See, I'll see you at the beach. Okay, I'll be looking for you. Fine. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't know why I'm shouting. This is amplified. There's plenty of reason for me to just remain perfectly calm. But um, one, one, tends to, uh, one tends to feel that uh, he's out there someplace, and I'd better <laughs> yell at him so he can hear me. Here is the reflections of this, um, of the land mass across the way. Uh, that's one of the reasons that it's probably dark, but you can see these are deliberate strokes. Uh, I'm not pulling color down from there and hoping that it becomes a reflection. I am working with a, with a technique to be able to get the texture of this pond. If, you don't, if you're not concerned with texture and the fact that the surface of this pond is sparkling and rippling because there is a certain um, uh, weather condition that is making that happen, then you kind of have missed the anatomy of the, of the scene. Uh, the texture of water is not just blue, it's got a lot of things happening to it. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm concerned with the, the, the texture of a, um, 
of a, of a pond as much as I am concerned with the texture of a hair or the cheek of a baby when I'm painting. So uh, the deliberate strokes are the things that I find have to be attended to. Here is the darkness here, which is, um, which as you can see in the monitor, has got to do with the with the, um, uh, well, the breezes on the surface of the water. And then uh, something wonderful happens. A very pale quality takes place. Uh, why? Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to explain it. But I'm going to paint it and see if, uh, if I can get the, uh, the effect needed. Uh, if you don't have it look like water, uh, then don't attempt to paint it. It must look like water. And here I'm going to remove some of this um, some of this dark color because this is where the pale area comes and I'm going to prepare to put the pale color on by squeezing some more white out and I'm um, going to use a little bit of purer tone here. I'm going to use some a cerulean blue um, mixed pure with the white and get it into the foreground meaning that I'm preparing the background to receive the weeds that are on the side are on the bank of the of the pond. Here is the very pale blue. It's a well. It's a little bit. It's a little bit uh, too manufactured. It looks sort of like a neon blue. So I'm going to subdue it a bit with some turquoise, and see whether or not. Yeah, let me get that on there. And it's 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 so fun to and somewhat exciting to be able to uh, observe and see these colors playing this game in front of me. Got another call or is it a break? Oh, okay. Uh, we take a break during this live program. I've never quite understood why, but I'm always very happy for it because I have to do things like clean my brushes and get some more paper towels. So I'll be back in a very short amount of time. on the screen, the, 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 that little painting that is just behind me over here is the one that burned down, the one that Ray was talking about a few minutes ago. He called it Elzebau's Cottage. Actually, it was called the Barnacle because it uh, clung to the side of that sab, that spit of land for such a long time and went through many, many hurricanes and it sort of stuck like a barnacle. That's why they called it then. Rather amusing name for it. But anyway, it's gone. The only thing that's left are those pilings in the water and they may be gone before long. Anyway, so it's always nice to have these things recorded uh, because nothing is forever. And uh, the barnacle certainly wasn't forever. There it is. Uh, the pilings are the thing that that house stood on. And it was many, many, many summers, 25 or 30 anyway, that I painted that that uh, little cottage on stilts. And it uh, has many mem memories. When it burned down, the lady who occupied it for all those years was uh, lost a friend. Uh, she was very disturbed by it. Anyway, I'm now uh, graduated to the, um, to the reflections of those trees in the distance. They've now gone because the time of day has, has, um, has changed or the, the surface of the water has changed. But anyway, there were some remarkably uh, vibrant, um, dark, uh, uh, reflections of these trees here, and we'll wait for them to come back. Probably, as, as I know, things always return. Uh, the, uh, if you wait long enough, they will come back and that condition will present itself again. So here is, the, uh, is what makes people slam on the brakes and decide to stop right here for the, um, 
for the scene that is uh, that is going to interest them. Hello? Oh, good. Another co another call. Hello? Tell me your name, please. Hello, Pat. Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Bob from St. James. I know Bob. You do? Yeah. You've called before, haven't you? Yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, we came down to see you, my wife and I. Bob and Peck. And three kids, and you know, we bought a painting from you. Bob Peck. Peck. I know the Pecks. Yes. Yes. How are you? And your wife, Dawn. That's right. Well, I'm fine. You're calling me again, and I'm glad of that. Actually, the uh, reason I was calling was I wanted to get a list of your recommended paints okay. that you use to do uh, landscapes. Well, we have a lovely little lady here called Judy, and if you write to Judy, she will send it to you post-haste. Okay. Uh, I prepared it a long time ago, and it's what you need to start with, and I believe that um, that's all ready to go. So just um, just to send her a card and ask her to send you some. Okay, great. Uh, that was a fr yeah, you know, that was a great uh, little town, you know, from Royal when we came to visit. Ah, see, I'm so glad this this program is spreading far and wide. Yes. Yes, I told my I uh, told my uh, friends and my audience about that about your coming down. Oh, great. And um, I think the name Bob Peck has now been bandied about in the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, all over Long oh, Island, wow. many, many times. Oh, wow, well, that's, that's oh. great. Oh, well, well don't be too shy. You know, as always, your show is fantastic, and you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. You like your painting you bought? Yes, yes, it's beautiful. Okay. It's all framed. It, it's hanging in like an hour then. Great. <laughs> well, thanks for calling, Bob. My best to Dawn and the Critters. Okay, will do. Good. Bye-bye, Pat. Bye. Uh, by Critters, I mean two very delightful and charming children, uh, which I, and I got in the habit of calling little children Critters a while back, and it seems to have stuck. Well, anyway, we have some we have some reflections going on here. Time is running by. I'm going to stop doodling around with these reflections, but I want you to see how um, when the paint um, when you're using the the quick drawing white, it sets just quickly enough to be able to work it this way and to uh, and to get uh, the texture of the water, which is what I what I'm what I'm after. And here, where the, where the little surface uh, the little surface um, ripples are showing. Uh, and it's not easy to do, and it takes some time, and you have to sort of concentrate and be willing to put in the hours. And, and there is a certain discipline that has to be exercised, as in everything. Uh, and, I, and I do wish that the, um, that the uh, general educational system would concentrate a little bit more on discipline, because of, of any medium, of anything, whether, whether it's reading or painting or anything else, uh, I find that I use uh, um, uh, my discipline on a daily basis, and it's a very valuable tool, and um, I think it's a mistake not to concentrate on it periodically. Uh, I'm going to work now into the trees. Uh, the trees are going to be um, uh, a combination of the blue that I mixed for the, uh, for the uh, river, or the pond rather, and a touch of uh, raw sienna. Raw sienna is a wonderfully uh, dangerous color to use, but it certainly is um, it's, it's vital to, be, to, to use in landscapes. It does all kinds of things that needs to be done. Uh, it has the warmth of the, of the um, rose and orange tones, but then it also has the vibrancy of the deeper ones. And here I'm going to put in, and this is where you, this is where you have to have some, some amount of, a, a little bit of amount of confidence and, uh, and, and a smattering of some guts to run right over this uh, uh, prepared sky uh, with a brush full of color and come down and cross everything and hope that you have gotten it as close to what you're looking at as possible. Uh, it takes some. It takes a little bit of concentrating. I, I, I would not want anybody to think that this is a, this is an easy task. But um, you can see that uh, without dwelling too much on it, you can in fact uh, with the uh, liquefy the uh, liquefy the paint somewhat so that it will in fact flow um, nicely down across a uh, a fairly set. Paint. The paint is pretty well set at this point. And here's that little branch up there, which makes for more, some more interest. And then over here, in right next to it, is this tree, quite thin at the top, and it gets progressively bigger at the bottom. Uh, has a sort of a nice little curve in it. That's what you're always looking for, a little curve, instead of just a perfectly straight stick. And then continue on down until you get to the shoreline, and that's where it ends. However, everything has got a form, and everything's got shape, and uh, shape comes only through contrast and shadow. And so here, on the darker side of this tree, there is the, uh, there is the need to introduce the dark side of, uh, of this cylinder. Uh, a tree is nothing more than a very long cylinder. And uh, the cylinders have, the, have dark side on one side and light on the other. So if you can remember the simple formula that any branch, stick, arm, leg, neck is a cylinder 
with, um, with, a, with a shadow side and a light side. Certainly, uh, you may have thought of it, but if you haven't, that's a piece of news that you'll probably find very valuable for you. Here's this, this, this strange uh, branch that is going off into, into many different directions, and um, the, 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 the uh, ease with which you must do these branches is evident here. You have to use a very light hand and very thin paint and this wonderful brush, which is uh, incidentally a synthetic fiber, a synthetic bristle brush, but it works very well. Its life expectancy is not as long as a red sable, but uh, is also one-tenth the price. Uh, something that I think it needs to be attended to many times when you buy supplies because um, they, uh, it, they tend to be expensive. Okay, another call, good. Uh, hello there, hi. You? Are you there? I'm Hello? Shine. Hello? Hello? Yes. It's Connie Shine. Yes, you Connie. Mentioned, uh, you mentioned that you uh, show have a show four times a week. Could yes, Could you please I'm... tell me when, the times and the days? Well, Tuesdays at 8 p.m., Thursdays at 11, Fridays at 9, and I believe there are maybe a few more, and I think that maybe before the show is over, I'll be able to tell you if there are any more at any other time. But those are the ones that I have written right here in front of me, so that uh, that's, that's that's pretty sure. That's 11 a.m.? No, p.m. Oh, p.m. Yeah. No, I'm not a morning show. I see. Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks for calling. Any other days? I'm not sure. I mean, the the, uh, the programming here is uh, is extensive, and I and I am, I really am not. Uh, th these are the ones that I know for sure. Anyway, uh, the I'm barely touching the canvas with this brush because the the trees are still somewhat leafless, and what you have to pay attention to because trees have their own anatomy. Some branches go up and some branches go down, and the ones that go down are sometimes very. Uh, it is it is mysterious. Everybody thinks that branches should have to go up, but these tell you that many of them go down and they come out and they and they and they are always thinner at the end, uh, thicker towards the bark uh, toward, towards the trunk where they where they begin. And these things, uh, if you attend to this uh, uh, in an observational way, you'll find yourself doing trees with a little bit more ease than you may have had before. Because the the um, the uh, the way the whole th setup is 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 uh, figured out uh, that at the at the beginning of a branch it is thicker than at the end, and of course the little tiny branches are myriad, uh, very small. Um, twigs which have to be attended to with a technique which I can show you perhaps a little bit later but before it gets too late I just like to get some of this foreground resolved and then we can carry on with some more uh, with some more branches and trees and so on what is happening over here in the um, in the distance is I'm going to use the same brush again there are some sort of uh, sepia toned and wonderful sort of cribbly looking branch uh, bushes here that are that are uh, well they could be just about anything they could be just brambles they could be uh, poison ivy they could be whatever is growing in these wild places but they afford a nice dark rich tone back here in the uh, in the left corner of the painting and then they repeat themselves over here underneath this tree which is a good way to end that um, trunk uh, because obviously it's growing on the land but it's being but it's surrounded with a lot of this uh, very rich uh, chocolatey brown sepia toned um, brambles and they can be done uh, in many different ways as you can see the the um, the brush is, is is helping it along uh, by doing uh, not necessarily accidental but uh, somewhat telling uh, uh, technique of uh, of telling you that th that things there are are very uh, spiky and uh, if they're spiky, make them spiky, because um, you're trying to be a recorder of this scene. And the spiky quality of whatever is growing here is important to the identifying, uh, identification of it. Okay, I have another call. Uh, and let, tell, me, tell me your name, please. Hello? Hi? Ah, uh, well, I've been, I've been uh, trying to get the... <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay, there you are. Hi. Hi. Hi, Pat. Yes. My name is Nancy. I'm a Long Island artist. Yes. And I watch your show faithfully. You do beautiful work. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to share with you what I'm doing with my landscape painting. Great. Um, I work in South Nassau Communities Hospital in Oceanside. Yes. And I'm using the landscape painting 
to do um, like wall murals for the cancer patients. Great. And what I do is I ask them what they would like to see on the wall in their room. And um, it's usually a landscape of some sort. And what I do is I use the Trump Loy um, technique. Yes. And um, we incorporate that with the landscape. And I'll usually paint a window where there is none. Oh, wonderful. And um, this way they can get the feeling that they're looking out the window and they can see whatever they want to see. And um, a lot of them are telling me they like to see the water. So I'm doing water scenes with lighthouses and things. And um, they're using it now in the holistic nursing approach with pain management. Wow. So what they do is they use the, uh, the wall murals with the landscape you know, uh, scenes on them to uh, help the patients concentrate on something other than the pain that they're in. Wow. So it's, you know, it's really working out magnificently. And um, the more uh, rooms that I do and the other patients hear about it, you know, the more patients want me to come into their rooms now. So it's really, it's working out beautifully. And, um, they're, you know, we're actually using um, the art of landscape painting to help uh, the patients. Well, that's, that's, re that's really most encouraging. I wish that you could, uh, tell me your name again. Nancy Reed. Nancy Reed? Yes. Well, Nancy, I, I, I have a feeling that, you, that, uh, that this is one of the more important calls that I've ever gotten because it is, it is going just beyond the business of entertaining. Yes. And, and uh, the cause, of course, is really astonishing. I mean, my husband re recovered from cancer. Oh, magnificent. But all, all, um, all techniques that help uh, through a crisis such as that yes. is absolutely vital. They're calling it uh, guided imagery. Uh-huh. And they're actually using it with... Um, like a focusing technique. Surely. It's, it's almost, um, I can't really explain how they, how they use it, but they're using it and it's helping these people. And it's, it's amazing. And, well, um, you know, I'm doing more and more of it and it's, it's working really well. And I've learned so much from your show and um, I'm telling them at the hospital that I watch you and I'm getting more ideas uh, of, for scenes on Long Island. Tell you know, me where the hospital is. It's in Oceanside, Long Island. Yes. It's South Nassau Communities Hospital. Do you get this uh, uh, cable there? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, the, so you could tune in uh, uh, right there at the hospital. Yes, I think that's what we're going to start doing also. Good. So, um, well, if anybody wants me to come to give a demonstration to the people, you just uh, you just uh, right to the station. Oh, uh, oh, absolutely. That would be fantastic. Maybe we could maybe we could make an arrangement. I live far away, but I come up here, and maybe we, it could all be sort of fitted into uh, one trip. Oh, that would be great, Pat. Good. Oh, I I think I'll do that. I'll write to the station. Sure, you do write to them and tell them, and, and, and we can make, you know, we'd have to do it a couple of months in advance so that I can get the whole thing squared away with me and my schedule. Right. But I'd be delighted to do that. Oh, thanks so much. That's that's fantastic. Well, I uh, you're you uh, you know you know what's fantastic is is little little Nancy here on the other end of the phone. Oh, <laughs> that's who's thanks fantastic. So much. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And, and I hope to meet you soon. I'm sure we will. We, okay. Uh, I think I think the die is cast. Thanks a lot, Pat. Good. Okay. Bye bye, Nancy. Bye -bye. Well, isn't that amazing? It's not amazing. It's just wonderful. These things happen all the time, all over the world, and, uh, and uh, you know, it, it doesn't make the front pages. What makes the front pages is car bombs and, um, and uh, uh, you know, genocide and so on. But the things that uh, don't make the front pages are happening right there with people like Nancy. And so, uh, you know, there's a wonderful thing about that happens in this, uh, in this television thing that um, very often uh, you get the feeling that uh, this is all far beyond just entertainment. It, uh, it delves into uh, an awful lot of other stuff. Here is the, um, here's the introduction of green. You, see, can, you can see how, the, how the, uh, the subtlety and the variations of color is what nature does uh, by itself and what we have to struggle uh, madly to get, uh, to get the subtleties of color uh, in, in our eyes and in our understanding of what we're looking at, to be able to suddenly separate uh, this very pale yellow grass and uh, and then work in uh, the deeper color 
Uh, and then as the foreground comes, the highlights on the grass are brilliantly lit by the sun and they become almost white. So uh, technique, uh, just like Nancy is talking about, the technique of trying to make patients well through other means than, uh, than of course, the uh, medication is vital and the doctor's uh, knowledge and so on is vital, but there are other things at work there which, of course, uh, we find out about in mysterious ways, uh, sometimes accidentally and sometimes very purposefully. So uh, the, um, the coming up here re represents a certain amount of uh, dislodging uh, the, the form. I drive, I drive a very long distance to come and do this, but to, when calls like that come through, and like Bob and all these people that, uh, that uh, are watching the show and find some redeeming feature to it makes it all um, seem like it's just uh, the best thing that I could possibly do with my time. Uh, I paint uh, down there in the Shenandoah Valley uh, very often, I mean almost all the time, and I am supplying that area with uh, paintings that um, they have not seen before because they're mine and they're, they're my particular technique. But uh, So art is alive and well and kicking just about everywhere that it goes. I'm running for the town council down there on the, on the platform of wanting to make Front Royal an art center of Northern Virginia. If I can succeed, then good for me. And if I can't, at least I tried. And um, the arts have an interesting way of, uh, of transcending an awful lot of other things. And um, the world really is interested in art, even though it thinks that it's a mysterious thing that has got to do with the Metropolitan Museum. What it's got to do with is the, um, is the visual uh, cognizance or awareness of what is around us. And that, uh, that is um, with all of us, but we're, uh, we're simply not trained early enough to be able to see it. So maybe I can, maybe I can get something going down there and, and, um, and uh, you know, accomplish that much too, just beyond the business of painting pictures and selling them to people and putting them in frames. Ah, there's another call. And while I'm doodling away with this little tree up here, let me take that call. Hello? Hello, Pat. Yes. Uh, my name is Linda, and I love to oil paint, but I'm rather new at it. Okay. And I enjoy your show very much. I was just wondering, would it be possible for you to show us the final uh, paintings? Because I know you never have time to really finish them and do all the final work on them. Yeah. And I would love to see it. Is there any way at the end of the show that you could have possibly showed us the whole painting completed? Oh, sure. Well, I mean, wh wh when the show ends, it, it's a, that's about as far as the demonstration will go. But, right. of course, but the, the refining is to be done, uh, you know, is done at another time. The one that you're seeing on the wall right over there, uh -huh. that, that one of the um, Cap Tree Bridge, I think the camera might be able to pick that up. Um, that is pretty much finished. I refined it a little bit when I got back to my studio, but that's pretty much what came off the easel uh, uh, during one of the shows. Uh, so... Uh, these paintings uh, that I do as demonstrations, uh, sometimes they get refined and sometimes they remain just the spontaneous demonstrations that they are. I see. Well, thank you very much, and I really enjoy your show. I'm glad you called, Linda. You should uh, pay attention to that beautiful voice of yours. <laughs> thank you. That's a lovely voice. Thank you. Good. Bye-bye. Well, Bye-bye. Um, uh, it is interesting what happens when you refine a picture. Sometimes you lose uh, the spontaneity. It's almost like forced laughter. Uh, you know very well that when people explode with laughter and it's all spontaneous, it's very, it's very alluring. Uh, and then when it's manufactured or forced, it loses something. It loses something. So uh, it would seem to me that uh, some of these that are so spontaneous and so quick, and the little accidents that happen and the little mistakes and so on, make the the, the, the make the work probably more interesting than if it were worked and reworked. I find many times some of the Hudson River painters of the uh, last century uh, would do uh, spontaneous sketches, such as Frederick Church, would do spontaneous sketches of, of scenes whereby the weather changes very rapidly and the sunset was going down or it was twilight and so on. The sketches are absolutely wonderful. The final works that are in the great museums and they're called their masterpieces, in my opinion, many times, not all the time, but many times are overworked and they have lost the spontaneity and they're doodled with and they're fussed with and fumed with and they are redone and redone and repainted and so on. And I would somehow, sometimes, 
much prefer the, um, the quick and rapid impression of a, of a particular place or scene without, without the reworking of it. So uh, I, think that, uh, I think that I personally would prefer some of these uh, semi-quasi-unfinished pictures over one that has, been, that has been what you might call refined. Sometimes refining them uh, is, not as, uh, is, is not as exciting or as interesting as the ones that are... Um, as the ones that are just come fresh off the easel and fresh from the land of great mistakes, which is what we're all involved with. The land of great mistakes is with us everywhere. The uh, final, the final working of this painting is to try to get the, the um, uh, leafless quality of this tree, about to burst into bud any minute now, um, uh, with this sort of lacy look that it has. Not, not easy to do, and sometimes you have to paint it and then unpaint it. Um, and unpainting it means that you sort of uh, take your finger and you kind of get rid of some of the details and sort of maybe maybe get, uh, try try to get the grayish quality to them um, that happens when all of these millions of branches uh, and you certainly would never attempt to do as many as there are. But the interpretation is what you're after. Well. I tell you, uh, the, the, the time, of course, has run out as usual. I'm going to sign this because people say you have to show us how to sign a picture. And so I'll sign it. i got the right amount of color in my brush right now. And I'm going to sign it right down here in the clear part. Which, uh, when I, and, and if you can possibly manage to, uh, to get your um, handwriting to work for you with a brush and with a, one of these nice flexible brushes, you probably could come up with an interesting uh, signature. Uh, don't, uh, don't print it if you uh, dolly printed it, so who, what, who am I to say? But for the most part, um, a handwriting is nice. Uh, also a date, if you can. Oh, I see there's a, there's a sort of a branch sticking up there, sort of sticking out of no place. And that, that's the kind of thing that makes these things rather interesting. There is, um, there is also uh, oop, missing, missing a trunk over here. This little tree over here is not being uh, uh, supported by anything. It's missed a little trunk, so put that one in. Logic has to, has to prevail. And maybe uh, the um, the uh, the wonderful uh, dark uh, reflections in this water can be now really paid attention to. They are appearing and disappearing as the surface of the water changes. But um, the, the reflections in water is probably what draws me to water paintings more than anything else. I find that um, I find that I really uh, uh, even the even down in the Shenandoah Valley where there are uh, rivers and the Shenandoah River, of course, is one of the most beautiful rivers in America, even though it's very small, uh, affords the, some wonderful uh, shadow uh, and reflections in 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 its waters. And the rivers flow continuously, so they change all the time, also. Well, it was nice, and it was, uh, and it's uh, now almost time to say uh, to say farewell. I'm going to say farewell to Mike Fagan once again. He's the one that, he's the one that shot this scene and has shot all the wonderful scenes that you can see around me. He goes out with his camera and uses his artistic eye and finds these wonderful scenes, and he's he's going to be going on. So, uh, farewell to Mike Fagan. I'll probably give him this picture as his last, his last gesture here as my favorite, very favorite photographer. Uh, and scene getter. So, here I am once again at the easel, wishing you good night. I'm glad you watched. I hope that you got something out of it. And uh, if you tune in on, uh, let's see, Thursday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and maybe some other time, uh, you'll catch some more of these uh, of these uh, landscape programs that are now covering the island. Thanks again. Hope to catch. I hope you catch me again some other time. Bye bye. <laughs>